Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, on this channel we cover all things data science, from data science career advice to reviewing data science products uh, and all the way to how to build a high performance data science team. Today I'm going to talk about my journey uh, into data science, where I started, uh, which wasn't a data science field, how I navigated a career and navigated bad advice, um, and how I ended up leading uh, a data science team that gets to work on projects from supply chain to manufacturing to automation. Uh, I'm excited to share it with you guys and let's get started. So one of the questions that I get asked the most as I talk to uh, different people within my company and other companies about how to break into a career in data science is how did you get started? How did you get where you are? Um, so I figured it'd be worth explaining that. What I find is that everybody who's in this field has a unique story. They got there from a different place. Um, few of us went any kind of classic route because there wasn't a classic route available, although that's changing. Um, so I thought I'd take some time and share with you uh, how I started. Um, so for me, it really started um, in, in college. Uh, I chose to study physics, um, mainly because I didn't have anybody to tell me that was a bad idea. Um, and so uh, I ended up studying physics and I found that I really love learning. I've always loved learning. Um, I love thinking about things and reasoning through things. And physics was an opportunity for me to learn uh, at almost infinite depth. Um, so you kind of don't run out of complicated things to learn in physics. And so um, I found that process to be um, really exciting. Uh, a part of loving physics is obviously loving math. And I love the way that math explained the universe. Um, and you could use mathematical concepts to, you know, build things that are really useful for people. Um, and so I, I ended up studying physics. I enjoyed most of it, uh, except for maybe my junior year. Um, and, you know, I wanted to go into a field where I had that same opportunity to learn um, and grow deeper. Uh, and so an opportunity came up to work uh, at IBM. Um, working in the semiconductor manufacturing field uh, and I ended up working in reliability. And so reliability is the study of how things behave once they are installed. So I was working on um, you know, mainframe CPUs uh, in like supercomputer CPUs. And so these things have really important workloads. Um, and so we worked to identify how we could make these chips more reliable. And what I found as I stumbled in here was, you know, to do a good job of reliability engineering, you need a combination of physics background, right? We're talking about nanometer scale production. Um, you need a background in electrical engineering um, and you need a background in statistics. Um, and so uh, it turns out that in the semiconductor manufacturing process, you collect millions and millions of data points uh, on each of these massive chips. And um, I found, you know, in the course of you know, working out reliability and doing design for experiment, um, I was working with data every single day. I was working with SQL every single day. Um, and I loved it. It, f it felt like a, I was hunting um, and I was always on the hunt for, um, you know, the next golden nugget of information. You know, how, how can you take this, uh, you know, thousand data fields and find the one thing that you can tweak uh, to make this thing more reliable? Um, and I found that, you know, to be really exciting. And so in that process, I started to develop those skills. Um, I started a degree in electrical engineering. This was 2011 timeframe, um, well before there were any degrees in data science or anything like that. Um, and so I started in electrical engineering as I found that data was where I wanted. Um, you know, I started to shift my education in that direction. And I remember uh, I took one class um, in, I think it was called data mining. And the class was actually pretty outdated at that point. Um, and they introduced the concept of decision trees. Um, and I remember seeing, you know, how 
you could model a decision-making process with a decision tree, right? So should we turn this parameter up or down? Um, and how you could actually model that statistically, like, um, you know, capturing things like uncertainty and things like that. And, and that class really set me off. Um, I got very excited about, you know, probabilities and, um, you know, how we could apply uh, the sampling techniques to the, the design for experiments that I was doing. Um, and then eventually I found my way into a class called, um, what was it called? Neural neural information systems or something like that. It was really a study of artificial neural networks and um, more the theory behind it. And so we had to pick a project um, and the project that I chose was um, I wanted to build a neural network from scratch. Um, and uh, around this time, I had read a book by Joel Gruss, which uh, I'll link down in the description below, um, called Data Science from Scratch. And it was, you know, working out all these different data science algorithms, uh, you know, regression and, um, you know, decision trees. But also there was, um, you know, a, a section in there about how to write a neural network from scratch in this case using like lists lists of lists and dictionaries which was really interesting and so i set it upon myself to build a neural network from scratch and so i ended up doing that i implemented it in numpy um and i didn't like go scour the internet and download code i actually worked the equations out and i had this big sheet of paper where i worked all the back propagation equations out and all the linear algebra um and i i implemented a neural network um you know in NumPy and I focused on the MNIST data set because that's what everyone does. Um, it was a good and popular data set then um, and I remember uh, I did a bunch of different things tweaking it and, and I, this thing was training on like a nasty laptop without a GPU. This is like before you know TensorFlow is really popular. Um, and so I remember, you know, I would have to train this thing for like five or six hours and it took me a long time to work out all the different bugs in the code. But I remember the moment when I was actually able to train, uh, I started with twos and sevens uh, to narrow it down and I was able to train a classifier that was pretty good um, on my from scratch neural network code on twos and sevens. Um, and, you know, I wrote a little thing where you could you know, draw two or draw seven and, and put it in there and, and get it accurately classified. And, and I think, you know, that was one of the moments where I started to realize the power of, um, you know, these techniques. How could machine learning be used to do things at scale to automate different things that, that wouldn't be possible before? Um, and so from there, I really dove headlong into learning these, these things myself. My school didn't have a lot of options at that point. Um, to go, you know, take another bunch of machine learning classes. Um, and so I ended up just basically going through, uh, it was probably six months where I read half a dozen books and did a whole bunch of Coursera classes and just ate up everything about um, data science and machine learning. So I was just super excited about the idea of data science and pursuing these techniques that could take data and make predictions that were general, that could be applied to new data. Um, and so I started to look around uh, within IBM um, and I found, I looked up a random person with a data science manager job code and I called him up and I said, hey, I would love to be a data scientist on your team. How would I do that? Um, and we talked about my background. At this point, I'd you know been in the company for a little while. I'd been working really hard. I've had a lot of you know data under my belt, and so I was you know excited to get a path. Um, and this particular individual you know told me that really the only way for me to do it was to go back and get another master's, uh, which at this point was untenable, right? Because I had three kids. And I wasn't about to put my family through another nighttime master's degree uh, while I'm, you know, trying to work full time and, and do all these other things. Um, and so he, and then his other option was, you know, get a PhD and get your research published, which was a step even further in the direction of not being able to do it. So I walked away from that conversation really dejected. Um, I didn't think that I had it to become a data scientist, which I think is actually a pretty common feeling. I get, I, I talk to lots of people and they are worried that they don't have what it takes uh, to be a data scientist, this mystical, you know, mysterious thing. Um, and so what I ended up doing was just incorporating all the things that I learned into my job. I built these big ETL pipelines, taking data from raw bytecode 
um, you know, hex strings, um, translating them to human readable things, you know, building out uh, classific models that do classification and clustering, um, and then, you know, taking those as input signals to something that could, um, you know, predict reliability. And I built a, a system around that, and I was actually able to publish um, a paper, an IEEE paper, um, which was really exciting. Um, and so at that point, I decided, hey, I wanted to work in a group that embraced um, the techniques that I had because I was always at the bleeding edge, the very bleeding edge of these techniques and I was always carrying people with me um, and I wanted the freedom to go explore these techniques and see what was possible. Um, and so at that point I ended up uh, working on a career transition, which I'll talk more about um, at some point. It was actually a difficult decision, very difficult. I loved IBM, I loved working there, I loved the team, um, but I decided it was time to, to step out. And um, I was extremely fortunate after a whole lot of interviews, which I'll talk about too, um, to find a team uh, within Lockheed Martin that was applying these techniques, these things that I'd learned about. You know, I dabbled in natural language processing, I'd done a bunch of deep learning, I built a whole bunch of machine learning models and deployed them and I was ready to take that to the next step. Um, and one of the things that I really realized was I love data, okay? Um, I could work on data associated with manufacturing and production, um, but I realized I could work on data about anything. The, the thing that I was excited about, the thing that I was passionate about going in uh, every day that got me coming back to work was data. Uh, and so I, I was able to step into this role where I was able to work with data of all kinds, whether it be um, you know scraping thousands of uh, news documents and pushing them through convolutional based um, you know, classif classification algorithms that I developed or whether it was building a recommendation engine to, you know, improve the efficacy of a particular business process or whether it was applying kind of the techniques that I'd learned at IBM around taking a manufacturing process and injecting machine learning into it uh, in such a way that makes it more efficient or makes the yield better or reduces the number of defects or whether it's working with a quality organization. And so um, I was able to step into that role um, and what I found that was that um, the work that I'd done at IBM being in SQL every day for six years, um, you know, building these big ETL pipelines and delivering them, um, building out, you know, the, f the front end so that people could actually go consume that uh, had prepared me really well to dive in here. Um, and from there, I was able to really, you know, uh, spread my wings and investigate um, and go where I wanted to. And, and eventually I found myself, and we can talk about this too, um, I found myself, you know, leading a team of data scientists. So I went from not thinking I could be a data scientist um, to getting an awesome, incredible data science job and being able to work with lots of different customers um, to leading a team of data scientists, machine learning engineers, data engineers. Um, and that transition has been really awesome for me. And one of the things that I realized was there's so many mental barriers to making those different transitions. Um, and I found that you can do it. You can achieve what you want. And I remember, um, you know, probably two years ago before I started this, I thought it's going to take me at least 10 years to get to the place that I am today. Um, and, you know, through, uh, you know, some luck and, and um, you know, just applying myself and, and really following my passion, I was able to achieve that uh, much quicker. And so, um, you know, one of the goals of, you know, these videos is to help people who were in the position that I was in when I graduated college and didn't really know that this field existed um, or in the position that I was in when I had a conversation with somebody who said, you don't have what it takes to be a data scientist. You're going to have to pass this bar that's way too high. Um, I think that there are paths to getting to where um, you want to go. And I would love to share some of the mistakes that I've made um, and some of the things that I, you know, worked out for me uh, and help you guys as you um, navigate your data science career. Hey guys, so there you have it. Uh, that is a little bit of my story. Um, as you can see, there's plenty to talk about. Um, how do you transition uh, into data science from a field that 
maybe looks unrelated? Um, how do you overcome these obstacles? What are the skills that you need to learn to be an effective data scientist? And so um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like, uh, please subscribe. It's gonna help me a whole bunch as I try to grow this channel. Um, and if you have any, you know, tell me your data science story. Are you just beginning? Um, are you midway through the career and trying to figure out how to make the next step? Um, are you, you know, in school and trying to figure out if data science is right for me? Uh, I'd love for you to leave a comment down in the comment section and I'll take a look at that and we can build content uh, based on what you guys want and need. Thank you.